Hey guys, welcome back to Sarah's So Creative. I am going to be doing another sea glass video with you today, another craft. And I got a lot of views yesterday on my drilling sea glass video, and I really appreciate it. If you could watch the video, if you haven't, and give it a big thumbs up, that'd be great. Um, and commenting is always great, but keep the negative comments to yourself. Um, I am going to be teaching a class for elementary age students tomorrow, and this is one of the things that I hope that we'll be doing. And so I thought I'd take you along. So I've got my little buddy Violet here to help out. Hi, Violet. Hi. And she's probably just going to end up watching, but I thought no, I'd introduce yeah, her no, anyhow. No. So the things you need for this project are obviously some sea glass. I have some purples and some greens and then some whites and aquas and a few shells. And you can you don't need to use sea glass. You can use any kind of glass, really. Those little um, gems from the craft store would work okay or just regular shells. And then a hot glue gun pair of scissors. I'm going to use some fishing line and some backup glue sticks for when I run out. Okay. How could I forget that we also need a piece of wood to hang it from? This is driftwood. Um, I found a bunch recently, but again, you can use just any kind of stick um, that or you like. Skewer. Violet's going to use a skewer. That ought to go well. <laughs> That's just because I just found it. Okay, so starting with the stick, you're just gonna take your fishing line and determine how long you want your first strand to be. I'm gonna make mine about a foot. Yeah, it's more like a foot and a half. And you're just going to make a knot around the fishing line. And um, I am going to knot this about three or four different times so it really holds. And if you have butter fingers like mine, well, good luck to you. Because <laughs> tying can take forever with this fishing line. Okay. Wait, please. Okay, so if you can see that, it's a bunch of knots, basically. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is put a little dot of hot glue on the knot to connect it right to the wood. Ooh. Of course, that was a little bit bigger than I thought it would be, but you get the idea. Okay, so the string is now stuck onto the wood, I'm gonna peel some of this extra glue off. And then the next step, now you can either, with children, I would not um, try to have them tie the uh, fishing line around the sea glass because it wiggles around too much and slides. So what I'm going to do is hot glue the sea glass to the fishing line. And then <clears throat> that will be what how I present it to to children, but otherwise you can try knotting it around the glass and depending on how slippery your piece of glass is and whether it has any kind of grooves or anything to catch, it will tie. Okay, so I have a really nice selection of sea glass. Um, so I'm going to start with this one. It's actually a purple, shows up white on the video, but, and I'm gonna take a little hot glue, place it on the back of the sea glass Just a dot's really all you need. And then you hold the fishing line right into the hot glue. Pretty self-explanatory, right? And this will be the back side. Hopefully I'll get them all laid on in the same direction. So while mine dries, I'm gonna show you what Violet's up to. She's trying to knot this fishing line onto her skewer. And seriously, which is seriously. proving a challenge, so you may have to help with that part if you're doing this with kids. Dreaming. So this piece is kind of cool. It's got like a little A on it. Mm. And again, I realize that some of my pieces are not fully um, turned into sea glass like some people would prefer. But where I collect, there's no waves, so there's no um, corrosion on the glass. So I'm lucky to find the frosted ones like that, these ones. I take them just because obviously they're old and they're still kind of cool. 
So I will show you, I'm just going to take a little of the hot glue, put it on the back of the glass and lay the fishing line right across the glue, which is hard to do with one hand. If you're working with young kids, make sure that they know how to use a hot glue gun before they get started so as not to do like Violet's doing and shake hot glue everywhere. <laughs> but seriously, be careful. You can add how many ever strands yep. to your wind chime that you'd like. Um, I'm going to do three. I'm going to do one long, one short, and another probably long-ish. Um, but remember that it's going to be a little heavy when you do hang it. So um, finding a spot that can hold it would be Okay, key. so here it is finished. You can sort of make it out in the um, window, but we're not going to hang it there. We're actually going to hang it on the wall. Okay, so here's the finished craft project there. Uh, the light in my house is rather weird because those are not the true colors. Um, but I think it's pretty cute. In person, it's a lot lighter. I like it dark and brown. So yeah, pretty easy. I'm not going to obviously leave it in the wind to blow around because that would be glass blowing and smashing into each other and breaking. But really, it's just a little wind chime for decoration. Violet's, oops, still working on hers. <laughs>